Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Radio Taiwan International. This is Geek Out, and I'm your host, Michelle. What's your cup of tea? What tickles your fancy? Or what floats your boat? Join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world. So today, in our studio, we have Amanda Stevens, my very good friend. Hello. <laughs> so what do you want to geek out about today? Um, today, I thought it would be fun to geek out about... Like more traditional stories, mm -hmm. myths, legends, and fairy tales. Yes. They're, they're a passion of mine. Yes. Very, very soon. If it's not up already, Amanda's got her very own show here at Radio Taiwan International. It's called? It's called Tales of Our Time, where we talk kind of like you in terms of we talk to people in Taiwan mm -hmm. about their favorite stories, though not necessarily the kinds of stories we're talking about today on that show we cover Movies, books, comics, video games, wherever you can find a story, I want to talk about it. So that's what's on Tales of Our Time from Radio Taiwan International. <laughs> so myths, legends, and fairy tales, they're, they're all a little bit different. Yeah. So how would you define the difference there? So myths versus legends versus fairy tales. So <laughs> I actually, I worked as a teacher in Taiwan, and I've, I've taught several classes on this. I wouldn't say that I'm unqualified. I know, like, I feel like people who specifically study only this with, like, my dream job right. may have a slightly different definition. But the one that I've settled on that I think is, like, a very good layman's okay. definition is that myths and legends are very old stories about... I would now, agree with that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, for myths specifically, they're usually about gods or heroes, but not necessarily. Sometimes they're about animals. And they almost always tell like how something was created or oh. a way that we should behave. That's true. Also, myths kind of have this like kind of like a pseudo religious air to them, right? Like yeah. some people, it is like a foundational kind of belief, mm -hmm. but that is not necessary for something to be a myth. Yeah, I kind of feel like the uh, the term fables is, is very myth-like to me. I think fables are really close, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't classify them as myths just because those were stories that were introduced much later. Uh -huh. Like everything that we think of as a fable, I think is actually much newer than what we would call a myth, unless it's okay. like a modern myth. Right. Because like we know the authors of fables. Mm -hmm. Like in Western literature, we have That's Aesop's true. fables, of right? Course. Or if you're a Christian, then basically every parable in the Bible, in the Bible yeah. which we have, maybe we know the author, maybe we don't. But oh, yes. myths are like really, really old. We can't attribute them to one person. Author, right. right. We can attribute them to a group of people that might have originated that story. Okay. And they inform people's beliefs about the world. So those are, those are myths. Legends then. Legends. I think legends are kind of fun because legends and almost like folklore are mm -hmm. really difficult to parse out. And the reason is because when, when I talk about it, when it comes to a legend, there's something about that story that's true. Or, and this is where it gets tricky, like people believe something about the story to be true. Ah, uh, that is true. It's like so, perhaps some kind of event began people talking about right. it and then it evolved into it a legend. It could be an event. Right? It could be a person. It could be a place. Uh, it could be like anything, anything in that story. If people believe it to be true, it's generally considered a legend. Mm -hmm. So examples that I give when I do this are like um, the King Arthur stories. Oh, yes. Some people call them stories. Some people call them myth. And other people will call Call them legend because they believe that there are elements of truth to that story. Right, like some of it is actually right. True. Like maybe this is the real castle, or like the sword was really there, or the battles really took place. Right. Um, it's also kind of hard to parse out with some other legends, like if elements of truth were added later to give the story veracity <laughs> or <laughs> truth, <laughs> or or if they were there originally. So, like, another example that I like to give is um, Dracula. Oh, The yes. story of Dracula is kind of a legend at this point mm -hmm. because there's a lot, like, we know that there was a real person, but insofar well, as what happened. Right. In, in your, I, I heard that it was based on Vlad the Impaler. I think that's most people's belief, right. yes. Right. And who was a real person, by the yes. way. And, yeah, he actually did impale people. He was pretty bad. <laughs> like, if you, I, I could do a whole other podcast on yeah. this guy because he was actually insane. You're right. I went on a drunk rant. Like, this is, this, most people do, like, weird things for me. I, like, stand on tables and talk about myths and legends, like, at max volume. <laughs> <Lucky> <laughs> I, I was ranting about how wild this guy was. And, like, his family life was honestly insane. Mm -hmm. That dude is kind of a basket case, in my yeah. opinion. Well, we, yes. Uh, another show, perhaps. That's another one. Specifically yeah, yeah. devoted to oh, Vlad the Impaler. <laughs> that would, I'll okay. have to get a little spicy before. Yes. But um, how about fairy tales? 
I think fairy tales are the most fun because I, I actually took a class on fairy tales when oh, I was in school. That's so cool. It was fun. And so we focused a lot on like deconstructing and then understanding like how fairy tales work. But mm-hmm. basically when it gets down to it, fairy tales are stories where there is no place and there's no time. Oh, that's very so cool. Think about that. But oh, also okay. fairy tales are stories where magic is normal. And what I mean by that is like if you think of all the fairy tales that you you have like read before, yeah. they always take place like in a village or in a place or mm-hmm. in a time far, far away or Once something upon else a like time, that, right? Yeah. But also like nobody questions the magical things that happen because magic is normal. So like you can talk to a pot and the pot talks back. That's but actually true. No, no one, one says, why? Yeah. Why is this pot talking to me? I must be going insane. Right. Or- There's never <laughs> any question to like the rules of reality mm-hmm. because that's that's one of like the defining characteristics of fairy tales is that magic is normal. Um, at least on a on a very like broad scale and like different cultures might play around with like exactly what that means but generally that's that's holds true for fairy tales across all cultures so that's cool. yeah very neat I never thought about it that way I I love telling people that because <laughs> once you once you start to think about it you're like oh my god like that's true that I've never heard a fairy tale mm-hmm. with a place uh, or if there is a place like Usually, then that gets back to like things like King Arthur, where like, is it a legend or is, is it, a, it legend a, fairy or a fairy tale? tale right? Right. So they're kind of a little bit. I think stories go in between these a lot, and that's mm-hmm. where I also like to use the term folklore, because um, folklore literally is like stories of the people. And there's a lot of stories that aren't quite any, are not quite myths or legends or fairy tales, but they fall into something similar, mm-hmm. and they're a story that people tell and love to tell, and that's that's folklore as well. So. Yeah. Uh, That's like the fourth category. Absolutely. I actually, well, you guys have heard this many times, listeners, that I own a dice company, phoenixdice.com, for all your adventuring and gaming needs. But um, I based all of my dice styles on mythical creatures, fantastical beasts from mm-hmm. folklore. So I'm also a big fan of uh, at least the I monsters. Geek out about. <laughs> like, seeing your dice names is, is a big like yes. source of geekery for me to like go through and be like oh well did, did you consider this one oh that's very interesting oh it does this it certainly does yes. like, oh. okay so so then mm. now that we know some differences between myths legends and fairy tales mm. do you have favorites in all three of these categories uh, I like anticipated that you would ask this question <laughs> of I was course really trying to like pick favorites mm-hmm. But it's really hard for me. Like, I, I can tell you something that I don't really like in a lot of these stories, okay. especially as I've studied them more. Um, and all of these stories, I think something that I, I dislike the most is families that become collateral, if that makes sense. So like in A Hero's Journey, I think in a lot of stories, not not all, I actually think there's a surprising number where it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's a convention of a lot of societies where like yeah. the child dies and everyone's like, it's fine, like we'll just have another <laughs> one. But it's like that. <laughs> I don't know that that's really true. I, I'm even someone well, who maybe doesn't like kids necessarily, as but that, we, we that kind of hurts. Yeah, we both play Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. And frequently the backstory of a character that we make has some amount of tragedy in it yeah. because I think that's what, what spurs the start of an adventure because if someone were, were completely and utterly happy in their life, why would they go on a journey that could possibly end in death? So. It's true, yeah. but I mean, like a lot of times too, that will happen like in the middle of the story, uh, and at the end of the and 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 wives or sisters or mm. families as well. It it doesn't happen as often where it's just like my brother or my dad, but that also happens. And so something that I don't I don't really particularly care for is like stories where like in the middle of the story they'll be like, oh, and then I lost my entire family, but at the <laughs> end of their story they'll be like, this was a win, and you did well, good. Okay, <laughs> and those ones kind of bum me out, right. but I guess. If I had to pick a favorite, though, and I, I mentioned that because I think that's a theme in, in all, across all categories, mm-hmm. but that has been something that's turned me off of a lot of stories. So let's start with myths. Oh. Favorite myth. You don't have to pick one. It is it is like really hard for me. Cause I, <laughs> like mythology I mean, was kind so of my gateway really into these. Mm-hmm. I think I started with like Greek mythology was always that that's an easy entry point, I think, for a lot of people who mm-hmm. grew up in North America. It's very foundational. Now, see, this is the problem. One of my favorite <laughs> stories, I, I might be considered a legend by some people, actually. Okay. So, but I'm going to kind of put it down as a myth because um, ha- have you ever heard the story of Enkidu and Gilgamesh? Oh, yeah. Gilgamesh. Yes. So I was it, like, Enkidu, no. So but it, Gilgamesh, yes. Yes. So <laughs> it, Gilgamesh was like the famous king and yeah. Enkidu is 
it's a long and complicated story, but Enkidu is a man who's made to be his equal to kind of teach him a lesson. Um, and then they become like best friends. Maybe more, maybe not. It's it's one of those where you're like, oh, maybe they were more than friends. But <laughs> what's important is that like they were really important to each other. Yeah. And that I, I had just learned that uh, myth or legend pretty recently, as in like within the last uh, five or 10 years, it really quickly became my favorite because I heard it from a very good storyteller, okay. which I think is a big element in that. But one Please of the th- tell us what is the what is this oh. or tell us the, like a synopsis of what happens. Uh, it's a really it's it's an epic, okay. so it's actually very long. Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> but I could say like one one thing that I really like about it. Mm-hmm. So it it starts with um, at the very beginning, Gilgamesh, um, like he's really strong, he's really powerful. He's your he's your like prototypical hero. Yep. But he also has your prototypical mm-hmm. arrogance. Absolutely. Right? And so there's a goddess, um, or not a goddess, but a priestess, someone someone of power, who is like, we need to teach him a lesson. And then they make a man. And, and there's some things that go on that are not like radio appropriate, but they make a man, <laughs> and the man is his equal, and that's Enkidu. And then they send the man in, and then Enkidu and Gilgamesh like have a huge fight. And they're like, oh my god, we're equals. We should be best friends. They go on a bunch of adventures together, and then Enkidu gets sick. And he actually dies. And that spurs in Gilgamesh a fear of mortality mortality Mm -hmm. and death. And um, this is where it kind of started to become my favorite story because then Gilgamesh goes on a quest because he's, he's, he's incredibly strong. He like, he can, he is pretty smart. He's not like Solomon or any of those other characters Mm -hmm. on there, but he's very smart. Um, But he can't stop time. And so he goes on a quest to find immortality for himself, which is possible if you go to like the garden of the gods and there's a man in there who can offer you or who supposedly has immortality. So he goes there, he visits him and the man gives him a really like simple quest where he's like, hey, if you stay awake here all night, I'll give you uh, immortality basically. Right. And uh, Gilgamesh fails uh, like immediately. He's okay. like, I've got this. I No problem. No, and he then, doesn't. Like, he fails. <laughs> um, but... They, the, they pity him, this couple that has the ability to give him mortality. So um, they give him, I believe, like they give him a loaf of bread or something that he can eat, which will extend his life uh, to an unnaturally long period of time. So not immortality, but they gave him a long life. Yeah, they gave him like a like a doggy bag, like a, oh. a consolation prize is what I was <laughs> looking for. And um, so, so he travels back home and he's kind of like trying to make peace with himself. And he's like, all right, you know, it's okay. It's not what I wanted. I'm a little disappointed in myself, but I have to be content with this. Mm-hmm. And he takes, uh, he goes to go take a bath. And then um, while he takes a bath, he notices a really young snake come out of his bag. And he opens his bag and he realizes the snake ate the food oh. that would give him immortality. So like just like maybe a day out from his home, he loses that as well. Oh, wow. And he has to come to terms with losing absolute because after after he goes through all of this everyone like the garden of the gods is like we know you and you were never allowed to come back because <laughs> heck you dude like right. <laughs> you've forbidden to to try and tone it down to radio appropriate right, terminology thank you and, and so he he has no way back and he has to try to like he he makes peace with that in himself and he he becomes kind of like a storyteller and the, the storyteller that i heard it from like made it something that was very impactful to me because he gains immortality through being a good man, like through becoming a good king and teaching people how to read and really devoting himself to his people. Like at the end of that, then he dies, but the... He lives on. Right. But to this day, we know who um, Gilgamesh is because of his great deeds and because of like statues and other things like that. And so... I think half of oh, that that's was actually like really wonderful. Yeah, half mm-hmm. of it was the story, and again, I think like storyteller is really important. I don't know if I would have liked it had I heard it told from someone else, but that was like really meaningful to me to like yeah. listen to a character kind of like really struggle with that and like lose someone very close, right? And try to find something because for I think we we've, we've all lost someone whom we're close with, mm-hmm. and or we are at least worried about our own mortality. Mm-hmm. We fear death. So we do identify with his journey, right? Mm -hmm. Seeking immortality and then failing and then having Mm -hmm. to deal with that, but then becoming, you know, overcoming that and then becoming a storyteller. And yes, we live, yeah, we live as long as the memory of us. Right. And I mean, like, I'm sure like it, I, I, I didn't tell it perfectly here. I was mm-hmm. trying to like summarize it, of but course. you know, like it, it, it was that kind of like journey that he went on and, um, that, that was like really, I felt very touched by it. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know who said it, but something about we, we die twice the first time when we die and the mm-hmm. second time, the last time our name is ever said. Right. 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 It's, it's very similar to mm-hmm. that. And so I, I think, uh, that, that myth or, or legend is like really meaningful to me because it, it has, it doesn't really have like what you think of as like 
some somewhere someone said like there's the prototypical the the only one hero's journey and every story is like this and i don't <laughs> i don't think that's true or, actually right but i also think especially this story kind of breaks the mold in a couple of really important ways that's fun and it, it does it's very relatable I, mm. I think a lot of stories like this are actually pretty relatable when you hear them told the right way or at the right time right i mean most people are familiar with stories like say pandora's box right Listeners, if you're actually not familiar with that story, it's the one, it, it, ancient Greek myth, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. where uh, Pandora is given a box and mm-hmm. she's told not to open it and just trust. But, mm-hmm. you know, curiosity, something about a cat. But <laughs> so she opens it and then releases all the evils uh, the, mm-hmm. into the world. I believe it ends with, the, though she looks in the box and the last yeah. thing that's left is hope. Yeah. So. Although, did you know that technically that mm-hmm. was done to punish her husband? Yeah. So. There's a lot. There's a lot. Epimetheus? Of Prometheus. Epimetheus. Yes. Epimetheus. Uh, I think it was Epimetheus. Yes, Epimetheus. One of them. Uh, it, 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 the, the Greeks are very vengeful and very. petty, which makes them relatable mm-hmm. in a way that is kind of fun and right. spicy. <laughs> and I think, you know, watching the news every day, we do see all the evils of mankind. And it's, yeah, yeah. But there is always hope. Right, right. <laughs> it's one of, that's one of those, like, guarding. Although, actually, every time that I teach that, I, I always like to ask my students if you think like, do you think it's a good thing that hope stayed in the box, or do you think that it's a cruelty that hope stayed in the box? Mm, just kind of getting question. it's getting like more, you know. That's it's a very teacher question to ask, right. but I think it's fun to talk about things like that and be and and really try to understand like why was it told that way? Right. Like what what did they mean by that? Because I I do not actually subscribe to the fact like every story has a purpose I, that was kind of something that was added on later maybe yeah i think a lot of stories were told just because they're a they're good just story told. Yeah, exactly we, we love to tell stories that's why we write books and movies today mm-hmm. we don't watch books and movies for an actual purpose other than right. entertainment most it's of not the time. necessarily to teach you a lesson <laughs> that, that's where you get into fables right that are like those are those are specifically built with a lesson in mind right yeah like they're they've got something to tell you right. on purpose so yeah anyway Fairy tales. Oh, God. Favorite fairy tale or Ugh. two or three? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because it's so hard to choose, right? <laughs> so actually, I think one of my favorite fairy tales. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch. <laughs> I know, there's so many, right? And one, one thing I would say off the bat immediately is fairy tales are not the same across cultures, but they mm-hmm. often rhyme. And so if you... Something I think that will really expand your imagination, mm. I think is the best way to put it, oh, is to that. read fairy tales from other cultures yes because you will find things like that that's been one of the greatest joys of um living internationally Mm -hmm. is like meeting other people and also finding stories here and kind of like getting more involved in like trying to understand stories from other cultures like you will find things that are similar but described in a way that you could not imagine right so parallel Um, parallel ideas parallel storylines but well with their own cultural influence yeah Mm -hmm. as as a very small example like I, I don't remember the story well enough to tell it, but I remember I, I really loved it. It was a story about a woman. Um, it's an African story. It's a woman who she basically just has to go on this journey because like nobody else would do it. And everyone's okay. like, you can't do it. And she's like, well, no one else is going to do it, so I'm going to do it. And she ends up having to like kill dragons. But the dragons are like giant flying crocodiles. Oh, yeah. And like I've heard the about way this. that they're described is incredible. And like she goes on this wild journey. It, it, it has a lot of conventions of other stories of like going underwater, kind of meeting a prince who's like, wow, you're super cool. And she's like, I know, but anyway, I'm busy. So like, mm-hmm. let's deal with the problem at hand. Um, and it's a it's a very good story. I wish I could remember the name. I might look it up before the hey, end. Hey, yeah. If but... you guys have to hear this and it sounds familiar to you, please message us and tell us the name. Oh my name. god! Message me and come on my right. show. Am I allowed to do that on Absolutely. your show? Absolutely, do come that. Do send that. me a message we, and tell me because I would love to other. talk about that. Like <laughs> that was an amazing story. But right. But I think, um, uh, it's it's actually amazing how all the cultures of the world have some some sort some version of dragons in them, mm-hmm. which has which is possibly rooted in truth yeah so is that a legend i'm not sure well see that's right that's that's the thing i remember the first time i taught that like the first lesson i went over like everything and then at the end of the lesson i had a bunch of students i was teaching adults at the time i had a bunch of students come up to me and they were like i don't understand what is the difference between a myth and a legend though because like Mm. do you just have to believe so the second day that i came in i I, this is the first thing i addressed and i was like hey listen it is a i don't know if you'd call it a problem but like it's a thing like there's a lot of dispute over what people would consider yeah. a legend or just folklore or so, a story because yeah. it's, it's your own belief in it. Pro- but professors, professionals, please don't come for us. We're, this is just our definition. Or do <laughs> or do. I would true. love This is, again, I would love to know. <laughs> so that's my dream job is like studying. Okay, thank you so much for coming in, Amanda. Oh my God, it's already over.
All right. I can't it's believe it. It, it, it. Time passes it's fast. So fast. Yeah. But right. So fairy tales, myths, it's and legends. legends. So what's your favorite? Can you tell us? Message us. Let us know. Or, you know, come for our, you know, in, in, ineptitude. Do. But what's I, your cup of tea? What tickles your fancy or what floats your boat? Join us as we share passions from people in Taiwan and around the world. All right. We'll see you Thanks. next time. Bye.